Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, there was no video last night. Um, frankly, I was a little bit tired, uh, but more important, uh, we knew anything that we talked about or even speculated about was probably going to be omitted or, or exaggerated uh, by the important uh, CPI numbers. We'll get to that uh, in a second. If you are uh, brand new to our broadcast, if you could be so kind, uh, drop a like and subscribe. Again, I try to uh, give you the, the, the most unbiased point of view of any way. If it's bullish, it's bullish. If it's bearish, it's bearish. If it's indifferent, then you have to be an adult and kind of wait it out. But the most important part, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast for uh, a very, very long time, you know the cheat code by now, right? Anything above the 50-day moving average is bullish. Anything below the 50-day moving average is deemed bearish. And if you look at through the whole 2022 uh, session, 80% uh, of the time, uh, we were below the 50-day moving average. Of course, you're gonna get uh, random updates in between, but the trend underneath this light blue line has been to the downside. And the opposite occurs when you reclaim the 50-day moving average. If you, rec if you recall, this is the last time we reclaimed the 50-day moving average right around here. When we did so, it broke this whole aggressive, nasty downtrend, and we started about a month, month and a half worth of upside bias. And just like we talked about on the downside, that 80%, 75, 80% of the value is going to be to the downside, when you are above the 50-day moving average, then 75, 80% of the days will be to the upside. So you can see here, right? Look how many green days, little red days. Green days, couple of red days. Green days, green days, and ultimately, obviously, the market broke trend. So yesterday, uh, the market rallied. Uh, if you've been watching this broadcast, you kind of know that number in nausea, right? That 277, 278 level. We've been talking about that number, man, I, I you know, since, since, since Moses, right, was in preschool. So everybody should know about this 277, uh, 278 number yesterday we confirmed it usually it would have been a 200 star overnight long but the problem was we had the cpi and the cpi was obviously going to be the wild card in today you know how was the market going to interpret it and then how is the price action going to respond and if we've seen uh, if we've seen nothing uh just in the last couple of months in the last couple of cpis we know how aggressive they were here is the downside cpi talking about inflation is still here Here's your down CPI number with reversal. Well, CPI, you know, CPI, everything is now, inflation's a little bit cooling. Here's another CPI number. This is great, CPI is cooling more. Another CPI number, well, wait a minute, maybe we're gonna still continue to raise rates till 2024. So, you kind of get my point. So today, uh, today the CPI came out. I, you know, for me, I, I really don't care about every single detail, inflation, stagnation, tr you know, transition, everything in between, right? stagnant stagnation whatever the hell they want to, all these words they want to call it the most important point is how is the market going to respond how is it going to react and can we build right because the last thing we wanted to do if you're a bull is give up the 50-day moving average that you reclaimed yesterday so the question was can you confirm right can you confirm yesterday's price action and a crazy wild day today right incredible day I'm tired as hell, right? I think a lot of you guys are tired as hell, but tired in a good way. Uh, we saw fantastic price action today. We saw bulls get punched in the kidney when the CPI was released, and then they bought that dip within minutes, absolute minutes, and you kind of said to yourself, well, this day is gonna turn into two different things. They're either going to, uh, they're either going to advance on yesterday's price action, advance on yesterday's intervals, or there's going to be a dead cat, excuse me, or there's going to be an inside day that there were just kind of digesting yesterday's information and today's uh, market, market data. And guess what, both happened, right? Uh, in the morning, uh, we had some weakness. The market, you know, ate up that weakness once again. Cues went red to green, huge move. Then they kind of went back down. The bulls got their footing, went again, took out yesterday's price action, 
and closed pretty much at the highs of the day. And now the moral of the story is, again, the market doesn't need to go straight up. That's not what, you know, that's not what the 50 day moving average is. The key is the longer we build, and not every single day is gonna be an up day, but the longer we build and continue to close above this 277, uh, 277 and a half level, the higher probability we're gonna to continue to push the envelope higher. The next measure potential for the bulls, and you can see here, you know, we, we advanced off the 50 day. The next measure potential for the next couple of days is this 281, 282, 283 level. And obviously any close above the top of the channel here, the December 15 highs of 83, then we start pushing into some aggressive territory. You've got 87 and a half, and you got all the way up to the 92. So hopefully uh, everything ha happens uh, very, very orderly, very organically. So the bulls don't come out and say, well, we're moving too, mar too far, too fast. Uh, we, you know, we want to kind of see how the market uh, uh, handles these levels. So we want to have, you know, digestion days, we want to have aggression days. We want to have more digestion days. We need the market to build, right? We need the market price action over every single level it needs to be organically built every single day. And even the stocks that had big runs, like for example, you know, Amazon had a phenomenal, phenomenal, you know, four day run and it rested today, right? And a lot of, you know, some people turn around, well, Amazon's not participating. Amazon just went literally in the last four days from 86 to 97. Trust me. Amazon's participating. It's just tired, like every you know, like any stock that had major major moves. So we want to kind of stay away. Let you know, Amazon. I think it goes higher. I think it probably sees 102 now that we're bit, uh, building above the 50-day moving average. But in a perfect world, Amazon probably gets one or two more day res days, to maybe even test back the five-day trap and then run into the areas. But what we are seeing and what we did see today, a lot of names just like the QQQs that's going to mirror the image got above the 50 day, stood above the 50 day, closed above the 50 day, and now we're starting tomorrow's session, again, day three above the 50 day. So the moral of the story, guys, bullish is above the 50 day, bearish is below the 50 day. Don't try to get cute, right? Even if we get uh, a day of rest tomorrow, like NVIDIA had a monster day. Don't think NVIDIA is a short tomorrow. It could be, it could rest tomorrow, but don't think it's a short. Stocks are resting, right? It's just like turning around and say, well, Amazon didn't participate tomorrow. Tomorrow's a short. Well, you can try, right? The most, most important thing is I can tell you can try. But again, always stick with the trend. And as my guy, uh, Matt Whitaker today, uh, set in the webinar, and I'm giving him the author complete credit. If you've been watching this broadcast, uh, there's something called the 10 day moving average that I called the birth of the trade. Matt Whitaker said, hold my beer. The 10 day moving average could be the birth of the trade, but the 50 day moving average is the trend of the trade. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. And hopefully by, you know, hopefully by the middle of this year, we're going to turn back into, into today's session and go, you remember that day that we could finally confirm the 50 day moving average? That was quote unquote, the bottom of the market. One little point I want to bring up. If you guys remember, right? Well, I know you guys remember, March of 2020, when we came out with this pandemic news, it was the worst month of the market in a very, very long time, many years. What happened next month, right? April of 2022, we had the best month that the market saw in a very, very long time. So let's look maybe, let's speculate, right? And let's play best case scenario for the market this year, right? Last year, the NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ was down 33%. Is it so crazy? And this is a rhetorical question and there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just putting it out there. Is it so crazy that we lost 33% this year? If this indeed was the bottom and who the hell knows and who the hell cares? Like again, we trade one day at a time. Tomorrow, you know, we could be having a conversation the weekend update. Wow, I can't believe the bulls gave back the 50 day moving average on the close, right? Anything's possible. And again, we take, we take it one day at a time, one trade at a time. But is it so inconceivable, so impossible to think after the crappy year we had last year? Is it so crazy to say the market, could, you know, the Nasdaq could go up 20, 25% this year? Just putting it out there, right? Not every stock is participating. Tesla, I'm still kind of trying to figure out, yo man, who's holding this sucker back? Again, you can make speculations, you can, you can have an opinion, but is it conceivable? Is it so crazy that Tesla can just finally turn around and join this stampede, right? I'm watching it, right? I'm definitely watching it. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for this channel to confirm. I think when it does, I think good things are gonna happen, uh, just like everything else. And even the biggest dog, right? Uh, even the biggest dog as as Lefty Nigerio, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm quoting 
Uh, I'm quoting from a movie, but Lefty Nogero said, even the dog, played by Al Pacino, of course, even the dog gets a warm piece of the sidewalk, right? Here's your dog. Now we're waiting for the warm piece of the sidewalk. So going into tomorrow's session, again, we're, we're continuing to look for names that are coming uh, above the channel, right? And if you haven't seen Donnie Brasco, I can't believe I'm even saying, in case you haven't seen Donnie Brasco, that's where it's from. Uh, tomorrow, I wanna obviously look for continuation names. I wanna look for stocks that are coming back out of their channels so we can get some really, really juicy value. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. As you can imagine, everything confirming the 50-day moving average is going to be a kind of a big deal. One stock didn't participate. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, Meta, 134 needs to build. Here was Meta. Meta continues to be uh, incredibly strong. So it took out this 134, traded all the way up to uh, almost 138. Uh, Tesla, again, still hasn't confirmed. Uh, there was a cute little pivot to the upside towards the afternoon, but it's nothing to do with this. Uh, Microsoft, massive, massive strength today, 236. Uh, needs to build. Here is Microsoft, right? Took out the 236 20 day supply and went right to the next supply zone, which is 50 day uh, of 240. Can you guess where it needs to confirm to go higher? You guessed it, it needs to confirm 240 uh, to go higher, but really nice move on Microsoft. Uh, Amazon, you know, briefly got above that 97 level pre market and they kind of had its res day, didn't do anything. Uh, Airbnb did really well. Uh, if it opens below 95, and that's exactly what happened, use the daily. If it opens above the pre-market highs, use 96 for confirmation. Here was Airbnb. I still like it going higher tomorrow. It confirmed the 50-day moving average. That's gonna be kind of a theme. It took out the 95, took out the 96 pre-market highs and traded up to 99. I think this is shot if this thing confirms tomorrow's channel, sees 102, 104. Look, looks really, really good. Uh, to the upside, uh, this is the one that really didn't do anything, right? And it's it's a little worrying that it's Apple, that it's arguably the most important stock uh, in the Nasdaq 100. But you know, not everything not everything could participate at once. So here is the pivot: uh, 133.55 needs to build, and not a big move at all. You know, which is again a little eyebrow raising. Uh, it took out the 33.50, traded up to uh, 34.26. Again, you know, you can make an argument. It did still put in the highest close in this whole formation, but really didn't participate in down, you know, eight cents on the day, which is very, very ironic. Uh, this was de this was definitely the biggest move of the day. Uh, 170, uh, 161 uh, needs to build on Nvidia. I said there's a shot. It gets to uh, 65. It went to 66. Beautiful move on Nvidia. And you can see it took out this whole channel here, 61, 61.20s. I uh, traded right into supply here, 65, 66. I think this thing goes higher. If this thing starts build, building today's channels, you could see 170 and maybe even 175 if the market continues its rally. Uh, but again, it didn't stop there. As you can see, uh, you know things just really got aggressive. Uh, QQQs, we, we, we took this red to green twice today. It's beautiful moves. The second one just went absolutely nuts. Uh, this was the dip buy that never got to that level. Pan W never confirmed uh, 132. Here's what I'm talking about. Uh, for experienced traders, watch the red to green move and the re reclaim of the 50 day. Obviously, they just went absolutely nuts. Uh, here is this, you know, my, my kind of comments for the Twitter feed. Sell some in the video from the 61 into the 6350 supply and then keep a runner to 65. It got to 65, got to 66. And here is a little cute pivot uh, on Tesla towards the afternoon. Uh, 122.70s, 123 needs to build. Keep in mind, it's a sneaky pivot on the 60 minute channel. Use it for cash flow only. It needs to build over yesterday's channel for a bigger macro potential. Again, a cute little move on Tesla. Here's the here's the 123.70s, uh, excuse me, 122.70s. Right here, 122.70s, uh, 123. You know, got up to like 124 and change again, just for a little bit of cash flow. So again, you wanted the bull market, you got the bull market. Now the question is, from your experience or your brief experience or or everything in between to be an aspiring trader, how much are you going to take advantage of it? And that's the name of the game. That's a question that I can't answer for you, right? That's a question that every single trader, no matter what they're doing, no matter how they trade, they need to establish where the macro trend is in, into the tape and how can I use my specific process to take advantage of it. That's it, guys. Have an awesome, awesome Friday. For all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar and you're taking your, your, your shot at the pivots, I think you're gonna like it. Again, I might be a little bit biased, but I think you might. 
Uh, for all you guys who are not, I wish you guys the best. Have an amazing trading session, and I'll see the rest of you guys on the weekend video. Guys, God bless. Have a great night.